What's do you want to? You can't be in it yet. You can't be in it yet. You are in it. Anywhere else? Anywhere else? What's up, guys? Dan here with episode two. Uh, Want to dive into one of the most frequently asked questions that I always get. How do I take better photos? Everyone loves taking photos, but today we're gonna show you some tips that can help your photos stand out from the millions posted every single day. So to help me explain, I brought in one of the best photographers I've ever met, introducing Nathaniel Flowers. What's up guys, my name's Nathaniel Flowers and I'm here to show you guys how to take a damn good photo. Oh, wait, 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 can I say it? Cue the intro. So you guys may recognize Nathaniel from the longboarding video that we made a few months back. He may be able to groove in front of the camera, but wait until you see him behind one. Yo, so I've been taking photos for about two, three years now. Originally I started on Nikon, a crop sensor D5500, but recently I just upgraded and got the new Sony A3. So today we're gonna break it down in two steps. First, we're gonna talk about how I shoot and then we're gonna talk about how I edit. So now we're about to go outside and take some pictures with the iPhone and the Sony DSLR. And we're gonna compare the two in post after. So now we're outside and we're looking for something beautiful to take a photo of. We stumbled on this bridge here which is gonna be today's subject of our photo. So just because here seems like the best angle for you, it might be, you got some pretty lights on the backside, nice shadowy foreground, someone might see something different. So always take a good little bit to look around before you start clicking. <laughs> That's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm on the far side of this bridge right here, and I've noticed that the sun hits it on the side, creating some contrast between the highlights and the low light. So I'm gonna pull out my camera here and shoot around and see what I can get. But I'm also gonna use my iPhone as a secondary shooter just so we can pair the difference. So for every picture I take with this one, I'll also take one with this one. So guys, one of the most important things about shooting video, photo, whatever, is the lighting. And the way that you can achieve the best lighting is often based upon the time of day that you're outside. It's really important to shoot at a time of day when the light is lower in the sky. Photographers refer to this as golden hours. That 30 to 45 minutes before a sunset, when you get that really nice golden glow and the sun flares in the background. So it looks like Nathaniel might've found the shot. Um, we're gonna head on over here see what he's got cooking. So after being at this location for about 10 minutes, we decided that this is the area that we wanted to shoot in. It's got so many different elements that we can use to add to our overall composition of our photo. So a quick tip for iPhone photography is lowering the exposure. If you tap on the subject and then hit this sun button and then bring it down, you can lower the exposure of a photo, giving it a cool effect. So something that Nathaniel taught me was on your DSLR, you always wanna go into your camera settings and switch it into raw. So when you're shooting in raw, you're getting a lot more color, a lot more depth, a much higher resolution, and overall just a much better photo. But when you're shooting something like this bridge, you really wanna focus on having a more narrow focus on having it. <laughs> Camera ponds. All right, so now we're gonna head on inside so that we can edit these photos on the light map. Oh, Christine's home. Desert boy. Hey, babe. You're part of a vlog now, eating. I was just about to text you to see where you went. You'll see Christine later on an episode talking all about how to eat healthy, right babe? All right guys, so we are back inside and we are gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom. We took the photos from our camera to our computer and then synced them with the Lightroom app so that we can edit them on our phone. So Nathaniel, which one would you choose? I like that one the best. Let's go with that one. All right, Dan all right. has selected number three and here we Pick go. Pick number three, my lord. No. Shrek references. For the true fans will Shrek recognize. Which... <laughs> so we're just gonna hop into this and quickly talk about three sections that I use the most in Lightroom. The first one is light. Starting here, you can control the exposure of your photo. 
you can bring that down or you can bring that up or whatever suits you. Since there is already a lot of light in this photo, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Remember, this is all personal preference and with each photo, it can be different. So I'm gonna go through next, contrast. This darkens the darks and lightens the lights, creating a contrast. So we do have that sunspot in the middle, so I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit so that adds that dreamy Orion effect. Same thing with shadows. This one, I, I kind of like where it is. You know, sometimes you don't always have to play with everything, along with the whites and the blacks of this photo. Also, you don't ever want to over edit anything. Sometimes it's good to edit your photo, walk away, come back and then see the edits that you made. And maybe you'll notice that you went a little too overdone on the blacks or on the whites or whatever. So, And that's what this before and after photo is. As you can see, the photo has been going to the original, back to what I've edited, back and forth. So you can always check in. All right, moving on to the second section, color. Here's where the magic can happen. Remember how we told you to shoot in RAW? Well, this is why. RAWs are larger files. I'm shooting on a 24.4 megapixel full frame backlit sensor. It's amazing, thank you, Sony. It allows me to grab information that I can't see with my naked eye, but the camera and the computer software can. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the individual color slider and just play around with this a little bit. So I know greens and yellows, can add vibrance to a photo, so I'm just gonna play with those just a little bit and just play around till I find something Ooh, I like. I like that low luminance there. I kinda like that. There you go. Every hour is golden hour when you know how to use Lightroom. <laughs> oh, like, why <laughs> flex so hard with your dirt on the calendar? <laughs> We're trying to look crazy. We're trying, trying to look cool. cool. Like, like, did you flex. even do any drone shots? No. no. Oh my. Bump up the temperature just a little bit. And there we go. Now it's starting to look like a photo. And same thing with vibrance and saturation. You can go all the way and go under. Completely your style. So I'm going to put it just there and then call that a day. And so I'm going to move over to the final one we're going to talk about today. And that's effects. So this is where you can play with texture, grain, vignetting, clarity, you name it. All these sliders are just more and more things that you can use to enhance your photos. There's the before and there's the after. Fire. Absolute fire. We're gonna go ahead and place the photos side by side, an iPhone edited photo next to the Sony DSLR edited photo so that you guys can really see the difference in color and detail. I highly recommend if you wanna get into photography, getting something maybe in the Canon Rebel series. They're really easy to use. It's what I started on. And you can really dive into photography with an affordable yet really clean camera. All right guys, thanks for watching our tutorial on how to take and edit better photos. I hope you guys can get out there and get some fire shots now give it up for nathaniel for coming out a uh, huge help you can follow him on his instagram at 00 nathaniel 00 and also check out our wedding profile at marry me media uh, we like to go and tag team weddings together he does the photos i do the videos just a friendly reminder that today's video wasn't about iphone versus dslr it was a reminder that you can go out and create with no matter what type of camera you have it doesn't matter as long as you have fun and enjoy what you're doing photography will always be there for you